Today I'm forging a sword, not with fire and steel, although that would be pretty cool, but with nomad sculpt and a little imagination. <laughs> Whether you're designing a life-size prop for your next cosplay or a sword for your 32 millimeter uh, rogue that you're designing, I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm Brian DeLuca and this is Maker Build It and it is time for you to channel your inner blacksmith, at least your digital one. Today we're designing a sword that would make any dragon nervous and I'm going to show you how to do it in Nomad Sculpt. All right, first things first, let's open up Nomad Sculpt. So we're going to open Nomad Sculpt and add a tube. Now we're going to stretch the tube out to about 30 of these units. Now you see here, there are the bigger units and then there are the small units with inside of it. It almost doesn't matter because Nomad Sculpt doesn't have a direct unit of measurement, such as inches or millimeters. It's just units. And right now we're going to use the subunits and we're going to stretch the tube out to about 30. Now, what that really represents is about roughly a 30 inch blade because we're using these as inch units. Now we're gonna take the top of the tube and we're gonna bring it to a point and we're gonna take the bottom and we're gonna bring that in also to be the bottom of the blade. And if you think about it structurally, we would probably want that to be three, maybe four units wide. Now, obviously it looks like a big spike right now. So we're gonna add another unit, we're gonna click on the center line and then we're going to draw the blade out to the width we want at the upper part of the blade. Now you can do this anywhere or you can make your blade have different uh, shapes to it but right now you can see it's just sort of like a giant spike. So what we're going to need to do now is we're going to need to change the profile of the blade. We're just going to come up top and we're going to click on profile. Once we open up the profile, we're going to be able to modify the profile of the blade. If we see here right now, it is set as a square. Now what we're going to do is on each division, so we put three dots, we have our first, second, and third, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to move the dots in order to make a diamond shape. Now remember to keep them uniform, so keep them on the same grid pattern. That way your blade will be uniform throughout. Now you can see it changed only one part of the blade. We're going to just repeat the same step over and over until we get all three parts of the blade the same. And every sword needs a fuller because today we are digital dwarven blacksmiths. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to profile and we're going to click in between the two dots. And now you see it made another sort of V shape. But if you click that center dot and turn it from black to white, it will actually make a rounded shape. And now we have more of a traditional fuller that's on a sword. And we're just gonna repeat this process over and over again. Next is the easy part, we need to make the handle. We're gonna start by taking a cylinder and we're gonna hollow that cylinder out. Once that's done, and we're gonna split the cylinder and we're gonna get rid of the top half in order to make our guard. Now we're just gonna size the guard to the correct width. And then we're gonna make our handle. We're gonna add another cylinder. And we're gonna make that the handle. We're gonna taper it at the bottom. And then we're gonna use another cylinder to sort of add a little more detail up near where the blade meets the guard. Then once that's done, we're gonna add a pummel and we're just gonna use a spear and we're just gonna cut off both sides to make it flattened. But this isn't just any sword, this sword is a magical sword. And we couldn't just leave this a normal sword, we needed to give this sword its own mythos. This is the Sword of the North. Legends tell of an age when the world was colder, darker, and far more dangerous. In the frozen waste beyond the spine of ice, two titanic brothers ruled with iron wills and icy fists, Thalgrin and Vorvac, the twin frost giant kings. Their empire stretched across frozen tundras and storm wrecked peaks bound together by ancient magic and absolute frost. Fend their realm and their dominance. The frost giants called upon the last living forge elemental, burying it deep beneath 
a glacier and feeding it frozen obsidian and the breath of winter walls. From this ritual was born two blades, mirror twins in form, but opposite in purpose. One blade vanished beneath the sea during a battle with the storm god. The other became the sword of the north. The surviving blade was said to be cold to the touch, even in dragon fire. Its edge never dulled, its presence snapping the warmth from the air. Century later, the sword of the north is said to appear only in times of great unheaval, when the balance between fire and ice is threatened. Some say it finds its way to a worthy wielder. Others say it chooses chaos. But one thing's for sure, if you carry the Sword of the North into battle, the cold walks with you. If you want to download the STL for this model, there is a link to the free version in the description. You can also download the Sword of the North. I'll leave a link for that also. And that's it. Now you have a sword built for a hero or a villain. Hey, I don't judge. And all you have to do is now print it and paint it, which we still got to do here, and you're bringing your fantasy sword to life. If you design one, tag me in it, because I would love to see what you created. For more on 3D printing, DIY, or maker projects, make sure you like and follow Maker Build It, and remember, keep on making.